Hi guys, JJ Stewart here. Every week I get an update from Grammarly. You get that with your subscription. That gives you a recap of your biggest faults. You know, the, the, the things you're having the most mistakes with. And apparently... I don't know jack shit about commas. I'm getting all kinds of warnings about, you know, split infinitives and spliced commas and stuff. So I decided to do a video today on word crimes and talking about commas. Those bastard little things, sneaky little buggers that uh, cause nothing but trouble but seem essential in the English language. So let's take a look at commas. So I've named this lesson 17 Rules Regarding Commas. And yeah, I didn't know there were so many either. But hey, apparently there are. When you separate a list of three or more items, but not two, in a series, you use a comma. For example, we washed, dried, and folded the laundry. Number two, when separating an introductory phrase. While running, comma, she glanced back to check behind her. When setting apart a transitional phrase or expression, he warned, comma, however, comma, that the food was terrible. Number four, when setting apart a parenthetical word or phrase, the writer, comma, though fat, comma, is strong and healthy. That's right, I, damn right I am. Number five, when setting apart in a positive, now those are words or phrases that describe or rename something in a different way, you use a comma. So, the car, comma, a Ferrari, comma, sped along the road. Number six, when setting apart a non-restrictive clause, those are phrases that add more information but aren't really essential to understanding uh, the meaning of the sentence, uh, you use commas. The bacon, comma, cooked to a crisp and served on a plate, comma, tasted great. Number seven. When separating an independent clause, phrases that express a complete idea, from a dependent clause, <coughs> phrases that need an independent clause to make sense, you use a comma. When the alarm rang, that's the dependent clause, comma, the officers ran to their cars. Number eight, when using a name or a title that directly addresses a person. For example, will you, comma, Tom, comma, please lock up at the end of the day. Number nine, when separating an adjective ending with L-Y from other adjectives, use a comma. They were a couple of lonely, cu comma, troubled misfits. Number 10. When there are two adjectives where the word and could be used to separate them, you can use a comma. For example, J.J. Stewart grew up to be a rugged, handsome man. Damn right. Number 11. Commas should not, in general, separate a subject from its verb. Okay, this one's wrong. My friend Bob, comma, is a wonderful singer. The right way to say it is, my friend Bob is a wonderful singer. And now, it's time for a little bit of a break. Ah, <sighs> okay, break's over, back to work. Number 12. When a subject or object is made up of two items and the second item is parenthetical, you can set off the second item with commas, one before and one after, but not when listing two items. Confused? Well, here's the wrong way to do it. Bob, comma, and his band will be playing. The right way to say this is, Bob and his band will be playing. There's no need for a comma there. Number 13, comma splices. 
This is something that they always get me on. When joining two independent clauses, you need a semicolon or conjunction. A comma isn't strong enough. So the wrong way to say it is, we were out of bacon, I went to the store. The right way, with a conjunction, we were out of bacon, so I went to the store. Another one with a semicolon is, we were out of bacon, I went to the store. Now the reason why I get nailed for this all the time is because when I'm in the middle of writing and composing my brilliant stories, I generally don't stop to worry about punctuation. Um, I sometimes just fly through it and then catch it, you know, on the other side, so to speak, during the edit. But Grammarly still nails me for this every single frickin' week. That's why I'm doing this video. Okay, number 14. Don't use a comma before the word than when making a comparison. I didn't even know this rule. So this is wrong. Um, this box is lighter, comma, than that box. The right way is just saying this box is lighter than that box. Number 15. Commas should be used with a question tag. What is a question tag? It is a short phrase or even a single word that is added at the end of a statement to turn it into a question. A question tag always needs a comma. These paintings are beautiful, comma, aren't they? You didn't eat all the bacon, did you? Number 16. Use a comma before the word but when joining two independent clauses. So, the wrong way? Bob is a good singer, but he is an even better dancer. The right way to say this is Bob is a good singer, comma, but he is an even better dancer. So the two independent clauses, joined by the word but, needs a comma. And finally, number 17. Direct quotes and attribution tags identifying the speaker can be placed before, in the middle of, or at the end of a quotation, and always requires a comma. For example, once you know the solution, comma, Amy said, comma, the whole problem seems simple. You have mud on your nose, comma, my friend said. When you leave this house, comma, my mother yelled, comma, don't slam the door. The exception to this is when a question mark or exclamation point is at the end of a sentence before an attribution tag. In these cases, a comma is not required. And one extra note is commas go inside of quotation marks in the United States and outside of quotation marks in England. So, know your audience. And that's today's lesson on commas. Hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and I'll catch you later. Bye.